Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. As engineers, we're detectives. We have to use as many clues as we're given to solve the mystery of our wells. Now this case we're about to look at, it's really going to illustrate this. So let's put our detective hats on and solve this mystery. Now the topic here is overpressured reservoirs, geomechanical detective work. And another word for this is pressure dependent permeability. It'll make more sense once we check this out. Now this is an unconventional gas well. It's high pressure, over 11,000 pounds initial pressure. And we only have three weeks of production data so far. So we want to analyze it using RTA to try to characterize the well and make a forecast. So let's jump into RTA right now. Okay, so when I do flowing material balance, the first thing that's kind of alarming is how straight the data is. Straight usually means boundary dominated flow, but um, it looks quite straight to me. And so if I trust this, it says I only have seven acres as a reservoir size. Okay, again, if, normally this is curving because we're in transient flow, but here it's very straight, so that's unusual. Let's check out our unconventional reservoir module. Okay, so this is odd as well. The data is curving upwards. Again, I only have three weeks of production data. So curving upwards means apparent boundary dominated flow or transitional flow. So very unusual and the same thing is happening with material balance time. So what about a reservoir? Can I make a reservoir model that's only seven acres and in boundary dominated flow and get a history match? Let's try. Okay, so I've got seven acres here. The initial history match is very good, simply coming directly from our URM. Uh, I can try to keep this at seven acres, just like I have it right there. And if I want to, I can try to tune my K and my FCD a little bit. But, I mean, the history match is, is great. I'm kind of scared the fact that we only have seven acres here, maybe, that appears to be in boundary dominated flow. So the problem I'm a little worried about so far is that it appears like we're in boundary dominated flow according to both FMB and the URM after only three weeks of production. The other thing is it seems like we only have seven acres of reservoir. That's according to the FMB and the reservoir model. Pretty concerning. Well, what happens next? Again, we're blessed if we have some clues as our detective work continues. So we're given a great clue. After three weeks of production, there is a shut-in and we get a pressure buildup for two weeks, okay? So let's see if we can use this to help understand what's going on here. Okay, so if we just take the seven acre model that we just came up with before matching the production data, what we're able to do is estimate the average reservoir pressure. This is done because we have a known volume in seven acres of gas. We know how much gas we've cumulatively produced. And so using material balance, we can calculate what the current reservoir pressure is. And it says it's only about 6,000 pounds, down all the way from 11,000. Now, if we were to do a shut-in, it's predicted that our shut-in pressure would build up to about 5,700 pounds. Okay, so this is what is predicted based on our original model. But what does the buildup really look like? Wow. Okay, so when this well was actually shut in, the pressure measured in the buildup reached 9,700 pounds. How is this possible, right? Well, the answer is we need more energy than we think we have. And in this case, we need more reservoir volume. We need more gas in the ground to explain how high this pressure built up. So what we need to do is we somehow need to increase our reservoir volume so that the material balance or the average reservoir pressure in blue increases to at least this build up pressure. Let's do it right now in harmony. Okay, so here we are. Now we have the build up and we have a bad match. What do we do about this? So again, we need to increase the amount of gas so we can get our average pressure in the reservoir at least up to this. So I'm going to be just increasing my reservoir size. You see how 
the average reservoir pressure adjusted here. Okay, so I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Almost there. That's a little bit too much. Okay, shrink it a little bit. Okay, so now this is good. I've got my average pressure just above the buildup pressure, but now I've completely lost my history match in brown. So I'm going to try to iterate on FCD and permeability to see if I can get a realistic history match here. It's trying. Okay, I don't think it's going to get it. Okay, so we need to put our detective hats on again. What else do we know about this well? Well, we know that it's overpressured. It's got an almost 1 psi per foot pressure gradient. And so the light bulb should be going on that maybe there is a pressure dependent permeability or a geomechanical effect going on. Basically, as we lower the pressure in the reservoir, the permeability is effectively getting worse because those propped pores are shrinking as the pressure goes down. So we're going to turn on geomechanical. Okay, so the defaults are entered here too, and I can now try to tune the FCD and perm. Okay, it's uh, the shape's actually already looking better for both the production and the buildup. Okay, I'm going to pause it, and I'm actually going to try to maybe increase this geomechanical effect a little bit from 2 to 2.8. Now I'll tune the FCD and perm again. Okay, now it's starting to look a lot better. Okay, I'm just going to fast forward. I found that the number that worked the best is 3.7. Okay, so now I feel like I have a representative model of what's really going on. I went from 7 acres to 30 acres, which is much more realistic. And I've been able to tune my geomechanical inputs, combining the drawdown and this two-week buildup. Now, what happens if we take that geomechanical effect and apply it to our FMB? Well, before... We thought we had only seven acres and it appeared to be a very straight line, boundary dominated flow. But when we turn on the geomechanical effect that we tuned in the reservoir model, now flowing material balance looks curved. It looks transient and we get a much higher estimate closer to the 30 acre number from the model. So that is good. It's what we expect to see transient or curved data with FMB. What about the URM? What if we apply those geomechanical effects from the model to it? Well, before, it seemed like we had a curve of the data curving upwards, apparent boundary dominated flow. But when we turn on the geomechanical effect, we get a straight line, first linear flow. This is what we expect, especially in the first three weeks of an unconventional gas well. So things are starting to make sense with what we expect. Okay, so so far we took three weeks of production data we got some confusing results in terms of how low our area was and the flow regimes we appeared to be in. Then we had this beautiful buildup, a great clue for us detectives, and we were able to really tune some of these other reservoir parameters. How correct were we? Well, guess what? This well kept producing for 10 more months, and the question is, from that initial model that we just did most recently here, does it give us a good match for this more recent 10 months? Well, let's check that out. Okay, so again, we have the 30-acre model that we got from matching both the drawdown and the buildup, which has the geomechanical option turned on, right? So now let's see how the same model looks when we add 10 more months of production data. Now, personally, I think it looks pretty good. The first thing I'm seeing here is I've got this buildup here in brown, and my average reservoir pressure is above that. That's good. If this blue line was below this actual buildup pressure, it means that we didn't make our reservoir big enough. Now the texture, maybe you think, well, Graham, that looks pretty terrible. I've got history matches way better than that. The drawdown matters when you're judging yourself on how good your history match looks. So this particular well is currently, at the end of its history here, only drawn down 20%, right? 
it still has a high flowing pressure and when that happens it can make it tough to get a good visual match on pressure like we have here okay instead if we flip the match from pressure to rate which by the way is this button up here pressure or rate the results for this well look visually better okay so this is just a artifact of wells with very low drawdown okay now was there any room for improvement now that we have 10 more months of production history on characterizing the reservoir well let's check that out so this is my initial 30 acre match right using just the drawdown just the buildup and this is what we get by adding 10 more months of data not too bad I was able to tweak the geomechanical inputs a little bit and we got an improvement in the match, especially towards the end of the data here, okay? And it didn't really sacrifice anything early on. If you're still kind of not satisfied with how this history match looks, well, flip it to rate. And again, this is how you can report this to your manager if they are worried about your low drawdown matches not looking very good with any reservoir model. Okay, so what does this mean for you? Again, we're all detectives as writers of our engineers. The more clues we have, the better. In this case, we had production data, we had a great buildup, and we knew that we were in an overpressured well. So we took all those clues, we used Harmony as our magnifying glass to solve the mystery of this well. Okay, so the big takeaways here are, if you've been wondering how you can calibrate your geomechanical or pressure-dependent permeability inputs, you've just seen how a buildup can be extremely helpful for this. Next, if your well appears to be in boundary dominated flow and it, the area is very small, you should consider the possibility of a geomechanical effect taking place, especially if you're in an overpressured reservoir. And finally, if you'd like to learn how to do this and more in depth with your own wells, get in touch with me. We have a lot of very experienced instructors who would be happy to spend a couple days with you and your team tackling your own wells. And that's it. I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, give me a call or email and subscribe to be notified of next week's Did You Know episode.